sunshine, your light has come. The glory of God has risen on you. When darkness covers every nation, see the Lord arise over us. And his glory will be seen upon you. And his glory will arise and shine. Lift your eyes and see them coming from afar. See your sons and daughters gathered unto you. Lift your eyes and see them coming from afar. See your sons and daughters gathered unto you. Lift your eyes and see them coming from afar. Hallelujah. See your sons and daughters. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Please be seated. What a service so far. Well, we are really delighted to have Sid Roth with us today, this weekend. He's going to be uh, sharing at our outreach taking place tomorrow. Um, I've known Sid since the early 80s when I get saved. He was already saved. He was already a leader in the body of Messiah when I came into the kingdom of God. And I remember uh, the early 80s at the conferences, Sid was there, and I got to know him as a brand new believer. And Michael shared, actually Michael who, did you tell him? The, the man who just shared this midrash you prayed for him to receive the gift of tongues, and he received the gift. He'll, maybe he'll share. But anyway, so you've had an impact here in many ways. Um, Sid received the Lord. He was raised in, as, in an Orthodox Jewish family, received the Lord at the age of 30, uh, was a successful businessman uh, at Merrill Lynch, um, and then... God used a believer, a businessman, to share with Sid something he never heard before, that it's 
okay for a Jew to receive Yeshua as the Messiah, and it transformed his life. And not only did he become a believer, but he became a believer with a big torch in his hand. And he's been running with that torch, the light of the gospel, all these years in so many different ways, beginning with a radio program, and then a TV show, and then a network, and then another network in the Middle East, and on and on, book evangelism. Of course, he's partnered with us in many outreaches here, and uh, just, you know, in reflecting, you know, it just really for me, said it's great to your testimony as a Jewish believer, number one, but also a man of God, married, here's his wife is right here, married to the same woman that he started with, I believe, uh, and so that's a testimony, especially in today's world. We see men falling, not only men, mothers falling into Sid, uh, into sin. Sid has not done that. He's maintained the light of the gospel in a powerful way. And his light, you know, the scripture says the path of the just is like the shining of the sun getting brighter and brighter. And we could say that about Sid's ministry. It's getting brighter and brighter on into his later years. So let's warmly welcome our brother Sid Roth. Well, I had a message, <laughs> but I've heard such great scripture before the message that I thought I'd really center on that. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with the ministry, Messianic Vision, uh, I read a scripture as a brand new believer. And the scripture, now again, coming from a Jewish background, living predominantly in Jewish areas, um, I wanted to let all Jewish people know that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. And I read in scripture in the book of Corinthians, the key. To reach the Jew, to reach the Gentile, to reach the world for Messiah. And do you know what the key was? The Jew requires a sign. It doesn't say it's nice if you walk in signs and wonders. No. You don't need a dictionary to know the word what the word require means. A Jew requires a sign. And if I today was starting in ministry and wanted to reach the Jew, I would do nothing different than I did when I started. The Jew requires a sign. Yeah, but I don't walk in signs and wonders. <laughs> well, you should read the Bible. The Gospel of Mark says, those who believe. Is that you? It's me. Those who believe will speak in supernatural languages. It doesn't say they may or may not if God wants to give them the gift. Those who believe will speak in tongues. Therefore, I'm a believer. That I know. Therefore, if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, that I know. Therefore, I speak in tongues. But I've never done it. You're right. You've never done it. 
If you spoke in English and you never opened your mouth and moved your tongue and made sounds, you can say, I've never done it. But yet you can speak in English. If you spoke in Russian and you never articulated the words, you could say, I've never done it. But you can speak in Russian. You just haven't spoken it. Our Messiah said, those who believe in the name of Yeshua will speak in new languages. Those who believe in the name of Yeshua will lay hands on the sick and they might recover. No. They will recover. They will recover. Yeah, but I prayed for 100 people, and they didn't recover. So I guess it's not my gift. That's not what the Bible says. That's what your experience says. There's a difference between the Bible and your experience. I'll tell you something about me. I was involved in one of the first Messianic Jewish congregations in the Washington, D.C. area. And I went to a Catherine Coleman meeting. And I saw what she did. And I thought, if that daffy woman, and that's the way I thought at that time, <laughs> if that daffy woman can have those miracles, then I can. Now, I'm going to tell you some things I've not shared previously. I was in a congregation of which I was, initi I was one of the founders of. And I was an elder in the congregation. And the new leaders, because time had gone on, said, I don't feel comfortable with Sid praying for the sick every time he speaks. Do you know why he didn't feel comfortable? I don't know if I'd feel comfortable if I was said. I didn't have any results. <laughs> I feel very uncomfortable that he prays for the sick all the time. <sighs> I didn't feel uncomfortable. That's normal according to the Bible. I live according to the Bible, not according to my experience. And I persevered because the Bible says those who believe will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's what my Bible says. That's what your Bible says. So I persevered. And then I started hearing words because I persevered. If I had not persevered, I don't know if this next part would have happened. I started hearing words that I wasn't thinking about. I would hear a word like back. And then I would say, everyone with a pain in the back, stand up. No, I didn't do it that way initially. I said, everyone with a back pain, come forward. And five or six people, honest people, everyone has this pain, but five or six honest people <laughs> came forward. Courageous people. And I would lay hands on these people that actually believed I might get them healed, even though they saw me pray every week and no one got healed. <laughs> but they still came up. You figure it. And every single person in that line, every person in that line got healed. Every one of them. Do you know who the most shocked person in the house was? Me. <laughs> every one of them got healed. Let every man be a liar. But God's word is truth. The real truth is God's word. If your experience doesn't measure up with God's word, keep believing. Keep moving forward. 
Now, this was in a church, what I just described to you. It wasn't in our Messianic congregation. And I bumped into the pastor years later. And the pastor said to me, do you know? I don't remember the number, so I'll make it up. All six or seven people that came forward, every one of them, the pain never came back. Because as a pastor, I tracked it. I wanted to see if it was psychosomatic or something, you know. Man of great faith. <laughs> every one, years later, no pain in their body. None. How easy it would have been for the devil, and that's who it is, to fake me out. It would have been very easy. Here's the good news. If you are human, you've been faked out by the devil in the past. Repent. Let every man, let every experience be a liar. Just a, a wind passing. Here today, gone tomorrow. But God's word is true. Amen. Now, Rabbi Jeff started with the psalm. Holy Spirit, you're our most welcome guest. I ask you to go and flow. Holy Spirit, we recognize your presence here in this auditorium. Go and flow. Psalm 63. I'm going to read verse 1 to 4. Oh God, and I'm reading from the Supernatural Bible. That's one our ministry publishes. Uh, we took the best translation, the best from the original King James that's on the planet, the most recently revised, and we made some changes. Instead of Christ, we said Messiah. I don't know about you. Maybe it's because I'm Jewish. I like the name Messiah better than Christ. Messiah spells out who he is. Messiah. It's easy. In fact, before I go to Psalm 63, I want to uh, read Daniel 9.26. The anointed one, that's in Hebrew, the Mashiach, the anointed one, the Mashiach, will be killed. And his kingdom still unrealized. I'm reading this from uh, the Living Bible. The anointed one, the Messiah, will be killed. His kingdom still unrealized. Well, we know about it. It's happened already. The anointed one, the Messiah, died. And his kingdom wasn't realized on earth. And a king will arise whose armies will destroy the city and the temple. Well, 70 AD, temple was destroyed. Someone called the Messiah had to die, be killed, before 70 AD, according to the prophet Daniel. And war and its miseries are decreed from that time to the very end. What's the very end? The return of the Messiah. It's so clear. Just that one scripture in Daniel. The Messiah will die. And then, before I get to that psalm, I want to read Isaiah 53. Why? He died. I want to know why the Messiah died. Why God, the creator of the universe, had to tell us that this was going to happen. Isaiah 53, verse 5, the supernatural Bible. But he was wounded for our transgressions. 
Was he wounded for his transgressions? Why? He was the perfect Passover lamb. Perfect. So he couldn't have been wounded for his transgressions. So Isaiah had it right. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised, beaten for our iniquities. The chastisement or the punishment of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes. Now this is kind of amazing. We are healed. Not we might be healed. Not we will be healed. We are healed. So my doctor might say, I have a sickness. And he's not lying. But according to the word of God, God says, when Messiah died for us, we are healed. I am the healed of God. The doctor says I have these symptoms, and he's right. But let every man be a liar. God's word is truth. I'm going to live by God's word. We are healed. Why aren't we seeing a lot of miracles in spirit-filled churches or messianic synagogues? I don't think we're seeing a lot of miracles. Why aren't we? This is what I believe is going on. We're in between two moves of the Holy Spirit. We're in the tail end of the last move of the Holy Spirit. And we're about ready to enter, I say, I believe, any second now, the next move of the Holy Spirit. The prophets call it not just glory. The prophets call it the greater glory. Or I might say, the greatest was glory. The manifest presence of the living God. The greater manifest presence, the greatest manifest presence of the living God in history. And I like to believe about every hundred years God has to straighten out humans and he has what's called a move of his spirit. And we're over the hundred year mark. We are do, if not overdue, for the next move of God's spirit, the greater glory. I believe if you take every move of God's spirit from the beginning of time and put every move of God's spirit from the beginning of time together, this next move will be greater. You can't comprehend it. You can't even envision this next move of God's spirit. Let me give you an example of how I do envision, because even though you can't because I've never seen it before, you've never seen it before, I can take the prophecies and envision what it'll be like. Someone in this congregation will walk into a grocery store. And a good thing you're going to be holding the shopping cart because the presence of God be so strong you can barely stand. So praise God for shopping carts. <laughs> and you're going to be moved, you know, getting your groceries as you normally do. And every person you pass, something strange is happening to them. They're falling on the ground. And they are saying, God, I'm so sorry. I see what I did. I see how I hurt that person. I see how I gossiped. I see how I told a white lie. I see it. And God, you're a holy God. I never realized how holy you are. You're a pure God. And they're laying on the ground in the shopping store, grocery store, laying on the ground. 
shaking under the power of the living God, starting to speak in tongues. Almost part of them is in heaven, and the part on earth you see, their earth suit. And you, all you did, you didn't lay hands on the name of Yeshua. You didn't start preaching to them. You carried the glory. You were a carrier of the greatest move of God's spirit in history. And wherever you go, whether it's a grocery store or a drugstore or a library or a school, and it has nothing to do with age. It can be 90 and you could be four. That same Holy Spirit is going to accompany you wherever you go. And why are they repenting? Because people don't realize the difference between us and God. God is pure love. God is pure power. God does not stretch the truth. God does not lie. God is pure goodness. Not goodness. A human can be good. God is pure goodness. We've never been in the presence of this kind of purity on this side that we're part of earth. Heaven is that. That's why Paul said, I'd rather be in heaven. Why? He was there. He saw what it was like. But for your sake, because I want you in heaven with me, I'm going to hang around here. Why would you want to fight rabbis saying you're not really Jews? Why would you rather fight the world? They use a word now. They keep changing the word, but the, the events are still the same. Woke. Why would you, why would you want to live in a woke wor world? It's so nuts, it's nuts. <laughs> in the United States, I'll tell you how nuts it's getting. Someone can come in illegally. Illegally. No one stops them. And then they find this woke state, and they say, a man says, I think I'm supposed to be a woman. And then we in the United States pay for the surgery that should have never been, and we maim and ruin a beautiful work of God because that's what culture says is normal. I can't see that as normal. It makes no sense. And we're spending millions, if not billions of dollars doing surgeries on illegal people that should have never had the surgery in the first place. If, you, if that isn't crazy, I don't know what crazy is. We have a word that's, that sounds crazier to me than crazy. It's a Hebrew word. It's called mashuga. <laughs> that is mashuga. Am I right? Because we're in between the move of two moves of God, the tail end of the last move and the infancy of the beginning. And it is here, but it's just the infancy. Let me tell you two scriptures that zero in on this next, I believe, last I believe greatest move of the greater glory. My two favorite scriptures are both in the Tanakh, Haggai chapter 2, verse 9 in the Supernatural Bible. The glory of this, there's the glory, right? The glory of this latter house, that's us. The glory of this latter house will be greater. Here's where I get the greater glory from. Will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. 
And in this place, what place? Well, he's talking about the temple there. Do you know the new temple? Us. In this place, take your hand and put it right on your chest. In this place, I will give peace. And the word peace has a lot of meanings in the Hebrew. The word peace, my favorite definition is completeness. In this place, I have peace. In this place, I have completeness. You know what is in this place? Your spirit. You're complete in your spirit. Your soul. Your thinking. Your personality. Fears. Concerns. In this place, I have completeness in my spirit and my soul and in my physical body. Let every man be a liar. God's word is true. Paul stayed here on earth to get this word out. By his stripes, we were healed. We were made complete. But my mind doesn't tell me that. My experiences don't. That's why Paul said, renew your mind. You've got to renew your thinking. You have stinking thinking if it's contrary to the words of the living God. The glory of the latter house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, that's in my body, I will give Peace, completeness, says the Lord of hosts. And when this completeness is manifested fully in each one of us, then we will see Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14 in the supernatural Bible. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. The whole earth is going to be talking about the presence of God because the temple is now going from the United States to Canada, as I just did, to deliver a message that the glory is here. It will do nothing but grow. And you know what's happened in the past when there's been a move of God's spirit? Spirit of God has been offended and left. And it died out. That's the history of moves of God's spirit. This move, the greater glory, the whole world will be talking about. It's not going to die out till Jesus returns. Now let's go to that psalm I've been talking about that Rabbi Jeff started with. Psalm 63, verse 1 to 4 in the Supernatural Bible. Oh God, you're not just God. You are my God. You're my God. Say that out loud. You're my God. I'm glad that he's God. But I am even gladder that he's my God. Say that sometime when you're feeling down. You are my God. Early will I seek you. That means the first time, the first moment you wake up, the first thing you should do is seek God. And don't stop. Don't ever stop. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. That's a strong word. My, oh, every, every one of my emotions, everything in my brain thirsts for you. Well, it, to be honest, it doesn't always. It doesn't, being honest. But I'm going to say it because it's truth until it manifests. And I don't care what anyone says. Oh, you're a follower in Jesus. How come you can't pay your bills? How come 
uh, this is happening and that's happening and you're in bad health. I'm going to hang in there. I'm going to be faithful to the word of the living God. I'm not going to back down one inch. I'm, if a doctor says I have cancer, well, he's right. The doctor is right. I like doctors. I think many people in this room be dead without doctors. I like doctors, but I like the higher truth. And I'm going to hold on to the higher truth until it manifests on earth. And guess what? If it doesn't manifest on earth, I won't be disappointed. I'll be in perfect peace in heaven. So it's called win-win for me. <laughs> it's lose-win if I give up and should have had a healing and should have reached the next Billy Graham and I died prematurely. I'm going to let my words line up with God's words. I'm going to repent from my unbelief. Psalm 63, verse 1. Oh God, you're my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Say it. Till it does. Till it does. It will. It will. Trust me. My soul why, don't trust me, trust God. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. My flesh faints for you. Do you know why? I'm in a dry and thirsty land with no water. Anything short of heaven is a dry and thirsty land, and there's not even any water. I'm walking in this desert. My soul thirsts for you. I've seen you in the sanctuary. Any of you operate as seers in this congregation? That's someone that sees things in the invisible world? Raise your hand if you, if you operate in the gift of seer. Well, I've got some good news for you. All the gifts of the Spirit you can operate in. That doesn't mean you're a teacher of it, but you can operate in every gift of the Spirit. I believe before this service is over, some of you will be seers. My strongest gift is feeling. I can feel when the presence of God is in the room. I can feel when they're gone. Any of you have a gift, a strong gift of feeling? Raise your hand. Okay. Many of you will have a strong gift as a feeler when this service is over. How many of you want to be honest enough with this next question to get healed? How many of you have a pain in your back. And if you want to keep your pain, keep your hand down. <laughs> How many of you that have a pain in your back would be willing to stand up and let me pray for you? Unless you want to keep your pain. Now, you should be glad I didn't say neck. Do you know why? I'd call you a pain in the neck. No. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll let some other people get in on this prayer. How many of you, I won't call you this, have a pain in your neck? Stand. And while I'm at it, how many of you have a pain in your hip? H-I-P. Stand. If you're already standing, don't stand twice. How many have pain in your hand and wrists and joints, your hand, pains in your hand, teeth, gums? My goodness, I'll get everyone. <laughs> okay. You know, we got Rosh Hashanah coming up. 
Now, at our prayer meeting, at, the, at our ministry, we have about five or six anointed shofar players. I'm wondering, did anyone here show up with a shofar, even though it's not Rosh Hashanah today? Anyone here have a shofar that will bring it forward and blow it? You have one in the office. What's it doing there? I'm teasing you. Tomorrow, tomorrow. No. <laughs> I'm going to have him get this. Because the ancient rabbis say the sound of the shofar is all the promises of Scripture, of Tanakh, coming forth in the air. When Rabbi Jeff blows the shofar, I want you to kind of blow it, but blow it over the whole, con in other words, turn your body to blow it over the whole congregation. And um, when he blows that shofar, I'm going to go with that ancient rabbinical understanding. Every promise of God. Here. He sent, let me read a couple promises before he blows that shofar. He sent his word, this is Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word. Who is, and then we have a newer revelation of who is the word of God. The word was with God. The word was God. And the word became flesh. He sent his word, Yeshua, and healed them. That's a present tense. That's even old covenant. And healed them under the old. How much greater under the new? Psalm 103, verse 2 and 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Well, I remember them. They're in the word. No, you don't remember them if they're just in the word. They're you. They're in you. Jesus is in you. Psalm 103, verse 2 to 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. This is even before the Messiah died for us and heals all your diseases. All. How'd you like to go to a doctor that says, I will heal all your diseases? You wouldn't be able to get an appointment with him. <laughs> I'm going to say a simple word. And in this word, not just the people standing. Even some of you are seated. You're going to get a pleasant surprise. Some have cancer. I mean, God didn't tell me this. Just my common sense tells me this. Some have heart disease. Some have diabetes. Some have pains of all kinds. Whether you're standing or not, this is for you. This is for you. This is for you. I'm going to say Yeshua, and then Jeff will start here and just uh, focus the shofar on each group of you. And if you are they watching on the internet, Jeff? It's being recorded. It's being recorded. That's close. <laughs> and those that are watching the recording, it's for you. <laughs> the minute I say the name that is above every name, that every disease and every pain must bow to. The minute I say that name, you start blowing the shofar, which is every promise of God coming forth into the atmosphere. Yeshua! Now, the most important thing, faith, this is the word of God now, faith without a corresponding action, that's in the original Greek, 
Faith without a corresponding action is, I heard it over there, dead. You're a living carrier of God. So that means if you have a pain in your body, test it right now. Backache, stand up and bend over. Neck ache, move your head. Mouth ache, jaw problems, move your jaw. Hand problems, move those fingers. Move that wrist. Wherever, knee problems, you want to walk around a little? The Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Walk a little bit, test it. You're not going to know until you test it. You've got to bend over to see if the pain is still there. If you don't do it, you're not doing the corresponding action. You're not operating in faith. And without faith, can you please God? No, you can't please God. Now, there's a congregation of God pleasers. Some of you really know the Messiah. Some of you are in process of knowing the Messiah, or you couldn't have been here. It's one or the other. You're in process of knowing the Messiah, or you know the Messiah. Some of you have taken the Messiah for granted. You're going to get your first love back. Okay, everyone be seated, please. Now, if you had a, not by faith, because the symptom is gone. You had it, and now it's gone. If the symptom is gone because of the prayer. I want you to just raise your hand and keep it up for a minute, right now. Keep it up. I'll tell you what. Before you leave, it'll be 100. All right, everyone that raised their hand because it's manifest. Yeah, I'll take 90% on a pain any day of my life. But the 100% is yours. Okay, I want a few people that raise their hand, that want to give the devil a black eye. I don't want you to play games by talking faith. I want you to talk, it's manifested. I want a few of you to walk up and tell me what God just did. Just come on and uh, if you'll line up over here. All the others, not just one, come on. If God did something, I would shout it from the rooftops. I don't know about you. I wouldn't be in my seat. No one could let me stay in my seat. I would shout it from the rooftops. That's what I would do. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because the gospel is the power of God and salvation to everyone, everyone, everyone that believes. I want to see this myself. You were the first one. One, I think I saw. Um, what did God do for you? I had a pain in my groins. It's gone. Did you hear that? Pain in her groin area, totally gone. And I could hear it in her voice. It's gone. How about you? I have been um, suffering with uh, neck pain. And actually, before we already coming, I have been praying for a supernatural healing, and it was really very painful, and I don't feel the pressure and the pain. Praise 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 I woke up with neck pain like a week ago, and I told some of you that I had neck pain, and, and after the prayer, I'm, I'm completely fine. It's, My goodness, I don't think Rabbi Jeff realizes how powerful that shofar blast is. <laughs> uh, on Tuesday, I injured my right knee where it's, it hurt just to bend it. But as soon as you prayed, I put my hand over it and start moving it. And no pain at all. Thank you for that. By the way, I have a lot of people that say they get healed before I pray for them. Imagine that. I'm not the healer. That's why. The healer is in the house. He's just demonstrated that he's in the house. Is there someone else that didn't share and would like to give God the glory for what he just did? Come on up.
I'm in no hurry. <laughs> I want to save what God did. Come on, I'm waiting on you. If God did something, shout it from the rooftop. It's that simple. So I injured my fin index finger at work, and oh, actually, it's got better. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh no, you can go. I got it. Oh, you're the translator. Uh, yeah, I guess I will worry. В тот момент, когда Сидро сказал, что это не я делаю, это он здесь. The moment, the moment Sid told that it's not me who is healing, it's, it's the one who is in the room. She felt very strong power in her body. Yeah, I, I'm her uh, husband, I'm witness. Yeah, she had a back pain in the lower back. Yeah, she asked me to massage her all the time. And the pain is gone, she feels that. Yeah, I don't know. Remember what I've been saying all morning. Some of you didn't manifest a healing. I know that. But everyone that did not, through faith and patience, the word went forth, it was from God. Through faith and patience, you will inherit the promise. Through lack of belief and being impatient, you won't get the promise until you get to heaven. I want to see that promise here on earth. I want to see everyone here expand their testimony. That's your testimony. When God heals you, that's your testimony. And the Bible says the devil is overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. So not just for your sake, for the sake of of overcoming the devil. I mean, I don't know about you, but I am no fan of the devil. He's a royal nuisance. That's what he is. A royal nuisance. And that's all he is. He's a liar, a thief, a murderer. A royal nuisance. And I am not going to give him this royal. Why would you give a nuisance the time of day? Give him no place. Give him no place. None. Some of the words I'm saying, it's not that they're so profound. But they'll end up causing you to live longer. Why do you want to live longer if heaven is better than here? You want to fulfill everything that is written in your book of life. And I, I'll tell you a few things. In your book of life, only good things are written. It's coming from a good place and a good God. You don't want to leave this earth until you know I've finished all the good things that God has for me to do in this life. Now, many of you have never had an experience that I had. It's hard to give someone something you haven't had yourself. And I've had this, so I can't give it away. I had such an experience on the night I was, I, I said a little prayer uh, there was something called the four Jewish laws or the five spiritual laws. You've seen those little booklets. I said the prayer, nothing happened. Absolutely nothing. But I was desperate enough to cry out. 
because uh, I was being attacked so badly in my mind by demonic forces before I was a believer. I only had the strength to cry out two words, Jesus help. And I went to bed totally exhausted, totally worn out. And the presence of God came into that bedroom. When I woke up, I had never felt such peace in my life. I had never felt, and I didn't realize, I didn't have a word for it. I have a word for it. I had a little bit of the greater glory entered my room, and I went from, I think Jesus is the Messiah, at least enough to have said a prayer, to I know Jesus is the Messiah. I had such an experience. And I want everyone here, I want three categories of people to stand. If you can't stand physically, that's okay. But if you can stand physically, I want you to stand. If you have never, and I want you to stand when I say this. I'm not even going to call you forward. I'm not doing that just to be seeker friendly. I'm doing it because there's not enough space. I want everyone that knows they have never publicly accepted Jesus as their Messiah and Lord and once do it right now. Now I want to finish this one psalm. I don't think I finished you. Where was that? Here it is. I want you to be like the end of uh, Psalm 63, verse 4. I have seen you in the sanctuary. I've seen your power and your glory. We've just demonstrated his power and glory right before you. You can never walk away and say, I haven't seen that. Because, and this is this is where I am today and where I want you to be. Because your loving kindness, not your punishment, not your wrath, it's the devil that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Your loving kindness is better than life. There's so many people, they know there's a heaven, but they're afraid to die. I want you to be, I want myself to be in that place where your loving kindness is better than my life. And my life is important to me. Don't you take my life away from me. But God, your loving kindness is better than anything I have in this life. So if you've never made Messiah your Lord, Stand up and remain standing right now. Stand up and remain standing right now. You've never publicly made Messiah your Lord. You'd like to do that for the first time right now. Stand up. The hardest thing is not to stand, if that's you. You don't know for sure if you died right now, you'd end up in heaven or hell. And I have interviewed people that have ended up in heaven and been sent back, and I've interviewed people that have ended up in hell and been sent back. So I have a very vivid description, first-hand description of hell, a very vivid first-hand description of heaven. You've never publicly made Jesus your Messiah and Lord. Stand up right now.
Okay, I'm going to assume that you wouldn't be foolish enough to pass a gift from God. That, you know what that amounts to? Being sentenced to be hung by the death neck until dead. And someone says, I know someone that will be hung for you in your place. And you don't have to be hung. That's what you're saying. I'd rather be hung by the neck until dead. Anyone here that would like to stand up for the first time and make Messiah their Savior and Lord? Okay. Those that have, so some of you haven't, but you have in your heart, you said, I believe Jesus is, you're kind of like where I was. I believe Jesus is the Messiah. I just don't know it. I haven't had my own experience with him. I want an experience that I'll never forget. And your experience will be different than mine. Tomorrow I'll share my experience in, in real detail. But your experience will be different than mine. It'll be what God knows that you need. Everyone that wants an experience with God because you've never really had that experience. <sighs> you want to go from belief to experiential knowledge. Stand up and I'll pray for you. Oh, I can see some of you standing. You're struggling. Come on now. Yield to the Spirit of God. Just stand up. Thank you. Would the others please stand up? Don't be ridiculous. Stand up if it's you. Just stand. Come on. Stand up. Stand up and remain. I want to say a pr special prayer for you to have your own experience. Why not? Stand up. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? Now, if I was a real experience, had a real experience with God, I wouldn't be looking. I'd be praying under my breath and tongues right now. Anyone else? This is, a, this is an exciting time for you. Don't miss it. Don't miss the moments of your visitation. Anyone else? Last time. Last time I'm going to ask. Stand up. Okay, everyone standing, look at me, please. Those seated. <laughs> Be doing what someone that, thank you. Be those seated. You'd be doing what a believer should be doing, praying in tongues right now where no one hears you but God. I got to ask one more time because I know better. Anyone else? You're going to be one of the first candidates to receive the greater glory, I can tell you, those that are standing. Everyone standing, repeat after me in English or if translation in Russia. Repeat after me. Dear God, out loud, I've made many mistakes in my life. for which I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Yeshua washes away my mistakes and, and I'm clean. And now that I'm clean, Yeshua come and live inside of me. I make you my Messiah.
and my Lord. I want to have my own experience with you. Amen. You may be seated. Whoa. Okay. Couple more things. How many, it's two more questions. How many of you have been saved, filled with the Holy Spirit? Everyone saved has the Holy Spirit in them, but I mean sort of baptized in the Holy Spirit, meaning immersed in the Holy Spirit, and has spoken in tongues. Um, if you haven't and you would like to, you should. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than any man. Paul said, I wish you all prayed in tongues. All means all. If he's healed all your diseases and forgiven all of your sins, all means all. That same all is, I wish you all prayed in tongues. If you've never prayed in supernatural languages or been immersed in the Holy Spirit, uh, stand up and I'll pray for you, and you will be. And remain standing. Now, if you want to break into a language different than God's given you, it's called multiple tongues where you can change. Like, for instance, I've spoken in a language that I didn't know one word and prophesied to someone. Sometimes I speak in different languages. If you always speak in the same language and you would like to move on to different languages, stand up. But you're going to have to follow instructions to get there. Now, if I had a group of eight-year-olds, which I have, it would be easy. So please follow what I'm saying. I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to pray with you in supernatural languages, in tongues. And when I say faster, I do mean faster. You have control on how fast you speak in English or Russian. You have control on how slow you speak in English or Russian. In this tongue, I want you to move as fast as your tongue can move. That's what I mean by faster. Let me demonstrate. Faster. You see how fast I'm going? Okay. Now, raise your holy hands to God as a form. That's the universal sign of surrender. And begin to pray. And feel, say this prayer with me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and power from the top of my head to the bottom of my toes. I love you, Lord. Your loving kindness is better than life. Uh, give me words to tell you how much I love you. Not in a language I've ever spoken before. Not in a known language. In unknown tongues. Begin to pray out loud as quickly as you can 
in your prayer lines. If you don't speak it, it won't come out of your mouth. If you speak it, I promise you it'll come out of your mouth. If you don't move your lips and make a sound, no one else will. If you don't, if you don't speak, ah, well then speak on the inside. And that one individual, not only speak on the inside, even if you can't speak, try to speak in a normal fashion. You can't. It's wired. I see. Well, maybe it'll work. Faster. Oh, some of the eight-year-olds would make you look slow. You're not going as fast as you should. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <sighs> Anyone here pray in supernatural languages for the very first time? Would you raise your hand? I see one hand. Do I see more? I just, oh, two. Do I see more? Three, do I see more? Okay. Now, one more thing about tongues. Paul said, I pray without ceasing. That means when I drive to work, I'm praying in tongues. I know a judge, I don't know him, but I heard him speak, a regular judge in the United States that says he prays in tongues when he hears the court case. So he'll have wisdom. See, if you're praying without ceasing, you're praying a lot more than you, most people, believers are praying. I'll make you this promise. The more you pray in tongues, the stronger your spirit becomes. The stronger your spirit becomes, the more gifts of the spirit you operate in. The more gifts of the Spirit you operate in, the more Jewish people you'll reach with the Lord. The more Jewish people you'll reach with the Word triggers Genesis 12, 3 in your life. I, God, will bless those who bless the Jewish people. And watch some of your Gentile family come aboard because you of Genesis 12, 3. The seed for everything. It's going to the Jew first. It's never changed. Romans 1.16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone who believes, it doesn't stop there. To the Jew first. Not, it's historically that's true. But I say spiritually, God's word has never changed. To the Jew first. Amen. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Well, let's have our worship team come on up. That was a very refreshing experience. Amen. We've just had an experience with the Lord. And I trust that you have taken advantage of being led into this by uh, Sid 
So why don't we stand up? We're going to have a, a, a worship, just a, a song of worship, and just let the Spirit of God continue to move among us. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, Sid, for taking the time to come and sharing. We really appreciate your ministry and what you've done in the earth and what you're continuing to do. And again, it seems like the torch is getting brighter and brighter until that full day. Hallelujah. Lord, by your spirit, seal in what you've done here. We seal in by the blood of Yeshua. I believe we've taken a step forward in the realm of the spirit. And Lord, I pray that you would give us boldness to continue. And I take authority over the devil. Let's not walk away from this and feel that we now need to be more dignified. You know, sometimes the liberty of the spirit is not in line with the quote unquote dignity of culture. Not that we're looking to do crazy things, but we want to be have that spirit of liberty. Amen. So I want to encourage you to be determined to walk in this anointing, in the, the gift of tongues, this prayer of tongues, the release of the Holy Spirit, both in our prayer lives, but out there and sharing the good news. We thank you for this, Lord. Continue to move among us in Yeshua's name. Amen. The fire of your coming, the glory of your presence, the fire, the fire of your coming. Yeshua Mashiach, from Lion of Judah, the God of Israel, the feather of Zion, the glory of your people, the King of all the Defender of Zion, the glory of your people, the King, the King of all.
leaving right after the service, so uh, I'm just going to ask the you know, crowd around and so forth. Uh, we're going to move out of here fairly quickly, so just be grateful for what we've received. Amen. We receive it. We're very grateful. And we do have a vision of that greater glory. You know, we haven't arrived, right? We have not arrived, and we're not complacent. We want more of God. We want to carry more of his glory. And we just had a real encouragement that there's more, no matter how old we are. Amen? Amen. That means more to me as time goes on, by the way. No matter how old we are or how young we are, we can carry more of his presence and glory. Amen. And still keep going strong. He's real encouragement to me. He's, you know, he's an older brother for me, and I'm really encouraged to keep going strong in the Lord. So we're going to conclude. I know you have a song you want to conclude with, right? Is it Tamu? Ooh, they're ready. We're going to conclude with this song. Um, yeah, let's give God thanks. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We are so grateful. And it's so great. It's great to have Marilyn Jones here with us. She's heads up Sid's ministry here in Canada. Uh, we're so grateful for our friendship and partnership with you and the ministry. So let's conclude. Let's walk in what we've received today. Let's be doers of the word of God. Amen. Oh,